And yet, she didn't know it, but she, she was on to something. Christmas is the beginning of a path that leads to the cross. The victory of Jesus over darkness and death really began in that manger, but it continued through his journey to the cross. From the, from the moment he was born, we see the story unfold. There's, there, it is inevitable where he will end up at the cross. We know this even if we don't want to voice it, but it is the subconscious underpinning of our Christmas hope because, you see, the journey did not end at the cross. From the cross leads to Easter. And that fact is actually reflected in some of our most thoughtful Christmas hymns. Listen to this. I'm running out of time, so listen. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise, there's the Easter message, the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Some of you caught what, what carol that is. Some of you maybe need a little hint. That is Charles Wesley's Hark the Herald Angels Sing. You, you may not have realized it's not only a Christmas hymn, it is an Easter hymn. They are tied together. The path from birth to death to resurrection is one path. It's all connected. Well... I have sort of a rambling sermon, so I want to end it with with this. Where are we today? Well, we haven't reached our own personal Easter yet. We're here alive, obviously. We're here still in the midst of the darkness at times. We have days where they're dark. We have times that are troubled. We have any given day you can open the newspaper and see the threat of war in the Middle East, threat of nuclear bombs in Iran or North Korea, and, and, and you can... You can wake up and go, yeah, we're in dark times. So we are still kind of where the Jews were when that wonderful announcement came that they had a king of kings, a Messiah. And the message in that darkness is still the same. It is the message of hope. So I want you to leave here today knowing that the hope is what will sustain us through the darkness because Jesus has come. His light is shining even if we have not finish the journey. Where is God taking us? He's taking us from tribe to kingdom. He's taking us from darkness to light. He's taking us from fear to hope. So in conclusion, I, I, I know I'm losing you, so I'm going to tell you a little story and we'll, cl- we'll close. Do you remember a few years ago when the news reported the real-life drama of some coal miners? They were trapped in the Quay Creek mine in Pennsylvania, like a mile down under hard rock. And if you've ever been in a cave, you know something of what absolute darkness is. Go in a cave and turn a flashlight off and, and you have a new appreciation for darkness. But anyway, having done that myself, I, I, I kind of could be empathetic and know what they were feeling to be trapped down there in the darkness. And there were flood rock waters rising toward them. And the oxygen was running out. And they'd been in there for many, many, many hours their only hope, the thing that was keeping them alive was they could hear the faint sound of drilling above them. They knew the rescuers were drilling. Several, several of the miners later reported that the only time that they felt the pangs of despair and began to give up was at one point in time, unbeknownst to them, the drill bit had broken. And so the crew had to stop while they replaced the drill bit. For a gut-wrenching 20 minutes... The poor miners in the darkness thought that the rescue team had given up on them, written them off as dead. One man of their group had already suffered a heart attack due to the stress, due to the despair. If the silence had been extended, they would have succumbed to stress and hypothermia. They would have died. But the rescuers up top had done something very smart. They had already wisely started up a separate drill, mostly for the purpose of making a noise until they could get the main drill bit repair, extracted and replaced. So the sound of the drilling, even though it was just a secondary smaller um, hole, the sound of the drilling saved them because that sound was the sound of hope. 
and what joy it brought the miners. So don't ever tell me that hope is something intangible or abstract. Hope is real. And the hope that Jesus gives us is just as real. Hours later, the rescuers got, that, got a small hole through, and they lowered a glow stick down, a light, through the small hole before they even got able to get a hole big enough to extract the miners. And that light coming down from above told them that they were saved, even before they were actually saved. Hope is real. In every story of human struggle against the odds, one common constant is that the survivors never lost hope. So yes, friends, we are at times on the verge of dark things, but we should not be, as Christians, on the verge of despair. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, and that is not a cliché. We dwell in the land of hope. We have seen a bright star, a true light. In the winter of our discontent, there is a Christmas star. 2,000 years ago, in a dark period of human history, wise men, three wise kings, they say, heard a prophecy and saw a light and tied their future hopes to a star. Star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, Guide us to thy perfect light. Let us still proceed. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, we're going to sing. And then uh, Bubba Lee, I believe, has an important announcement to make at the end of the hymn, so don't go anywhere. Uh, Number 318.